Hello everyone and welcome back to another Babbling Nines breakdown video with myself and Sloth for Kayo Tomori, AC Milan, someone that probably should have been in the England squad for the Euros, didn't make the cut and now he's being linked with a move to West Ham. This coming out um, in recent days around Tomori emerging as a shock centre-back target for West Ham. He was actually very close to joining West Ham a few years back, which I'm sure you'll all remember a couple of seasons ago when we were very close to signing him. But there were some reservations from Moyes at the time around his physicality and his aerial prowess. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting rumour that's coming back around. Just as a summary for those who want to know a little bit more about Tomori from last season. Again, English, uh, around six foot one. 26 years old, his contract expires in 2027, has an estimated value of around 40 million euros and obviously playing for AC Milan where he's predominantly played in that left centre-back role throughout last season. Um, and you can kind of see here he can play left centre-back, right centre-back. He's even played a little bit of right back. So yeah, he's mainly been that left centre-back position, which again, he's right-footed. It's probably not his most comfortable position. So he would definitely be a signing that can play both sides of that. But predominantly, I'm assuming he'd come in to partner Kilman, which would be uh, a level above what we saw last season. So, yeah, what are your thoughts on the initial links to Tomori before we get into the data side of stuff? Um, I think it's 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 a very good move because he is a very composed defender. There's a lot about his game that I think would really excel with Kilman next to him. Or all Mavropanos next to him. I think he is he is a great example of a modern day defender. Where perhaps I think his his overall game, his pace, his strength on the ball, and ability on it is perhaps the biggest strength to his defending. You know, it's his reading of the game, ability to tackle, and I think overall aspect that. Is very strong. There are a couple of weaknesses, and and I think when you just touched on Moyes, you know, kind of having reservations, I think that does stand out. But also, you've got to take the data we're going to give you with a little bit of pinch of salt because he's obviously playing at Milan. They aren't as defensively, um, you know, at a push as someone like West Ham. Really, and I. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And I and I think that um he he has all the assets to be a great centre back, but it's it's a case of getting them out there and if he's gonna come to West Ham and Lopetegui is thinking mm, maybe I've got a little bit of doubt about his aerial ability, basically just get him in the gym. Get yeah. get a special working on the jump, working on uh the leg the le the leg strength overall to really get the best out of the him vertically jumping and being that bit more suited physically to the Premier League. Yeah, exactly. And I think you know through it, you know he came through the Chelsea ranks, obviously in the, the youth team in the academy. He had a few loan spells at the likes of Hull, Derby, um, and then yeah, that's where he's kind of made that permanent move to AC Milan now. And you know it was a shame that West Ham didn't sign him when we were trying to a couple of seasons back because I think that was probably the perfect time to make it happen. Uh, it didn't happen, and now he's yeah, he's had a really really good time in in AC Milan uh, in Serie A, sorry for AC Milan over the past couple of years and. He did get a red card last season, but again, he's uh, he's someone that's very quick. Um, he would partner Kilman, I think, really, really well because Kilman is someone that will progress the ball as well. You know, it's the same level as Tomori, if not a little bit better, to be honest. But Tomori is just rapid, and he's someone that could almost play like the sweeper to the anchor. I think they would complement each other's game really, really well. So, in terms of Tomori's statistics from last year, comparing him with other centre backs in the top five leagues across Europe, you can see here where his best assets are uh it can order 99th percentile for goals and non-penalty goals he did score four goals so again it is, it's a positive for him to be scoring goals as a center back but he's not going to be brought in to be our striker i mean he might be but who knows um but you know look in the middle third there where you're looking at passes per 90 the accurate passes per 90 the forward passes per 90 the accurate forward pass percentage he's a really high up in these stats and again it doesn't paint the picture for everything because they're not always considered like key passes or ones that are going to be like breaking the lines. But again, it's the the willingness to play forwards and the idea that, you know, he wants to progress the play and not just play sideways or hoof the ball out, which we've seen with 
some of our centre backs over the last couple of years. Um, and also defensive duels, success, successful defensive actions per 90 at the top there. He's very high up in that. But then again, you look at a few under that on row four and five, you can see aerial duels one and aerial duels per 90. So firstly, these statistics are slightly skewed because he averages, he's in the 14th percentile for aerial duels per 90 because he's only averaging around 2.59 aerials per 90. So again, the way AC Milan play, he's not, really needed to do that at West Ham last season he would have needed to compete more airily to be honest but and he probably will do in the Premier League next season with the teams we're going to come up against but for AC Milan he didn't really need to but in terms of the aerial duels one percentage so he's winning around half of his aerial duels around 50.75 percent which puts him in the 26th percentile across Europe so 50 percent as an aerial percentage one is pretty low um, which is why he's in that 26th percentile and it's definitely something that Moyes probably saw and decided to go against. Do you think Lopetegui could look past that? Because again, six foot one isn't massively powering for a centre back. And we've spoke about the need for a physical team. If someone, you know, look at Arsenal, the way they're trying to build their defence with Calafiori, Gabriel, Saliba, Ben White as their kind of backbone with Declan Rice in front. Tomori isn't necessarily this big powering giant of a centre back. So would he still be able to cut it in the Premier League for a club like West Ham playing under Julian Lopetegui? This video is sponsored by Emotive. Emotive provide cutting edge digital services, solutions and training to companies and businesses of all sizes. Emotive have worked with some fantastic brands in the past, as you can see behind me, the likes of Apple, Google, Tesco and of course, Babbling Irons. Emotive offer four key services, the first being digital solutions, the second being professional training and coaching, the third being fractional experts, and the fourth being AI readiness. We're going to be working with Emotive on our channel to improve how we showcase the data to you guys in our breakdown videos and data analysis videos. If you want to find out more information about how Emotive can work with you, make sure to scan the QR code now, which will take you to emotivetouch.com, where you can find out more details about the company and the link will be in the description. A massive thank you to Emotive once again for sponsoring this video. And let's get back to it. I think he could. Uh, the The idea that we, we're just going to sit back and soak up pressure and look to hit teams on the counter. I think as soon as you set yourself one style of play, then it, it can make it quite dangerous for yourself. And if you're thinking, right, we're just going to soak up pressure, soak up pressure, and then look to counter hit them on the break and score from there i don't think he's the best center back for that but i do think he's got a lot of elements of his game that can help a team who may want to do that and if you're playing a back three if you had mavropanos kilman on the side of him then that is a, that is perfect i think the difficulty is that if you're playing the back four then you would maybe question his aerial ability a little bit more. And I yeah. think it's, you know, this this is probably going to be quite a high cost deal. Um, his wages aren't going to be small. I know he, he's apparently on about 80,000 uh, euros a week at Milan. Mm -hmm. But I think to come to West Ham to take that step out of European football, you probably need a little bit more. Um, but I think, as I mentioned, this is something that can kind of be worked on and honed because he's not going to have been playing in the way that Lopetegui would have wanted um, at Milan and it's it's that kind of issue that can be worked on if it's if it can't then you've got to question the signing as a whole yeah but I think there there's enough of a defender there to kind of iron out those worries, in my opinion, anyway, because the pace, the strength overall, and the ability on the ball, his decision making as well, which, as you mentioned, he's only had one red card in the past few seasons, and it's it's generally down to him timing his tackles right, um, not getting caught up in silly decisions to, to pull a, a defender back. He's got the speed to cover that. Yeah. So. I think he's similar. I think it's similar to someone like Mark Gahey of Crystal Palace, right? He's someone that's got to overcompensate for that lack of aerial ability, if you want to say it like that. And you know, his his ball playing assets for Mark, you know, Mark the reason Mark Gahey got into the England squad and you know played pretty well for England, to be honest, was because of 
how fast he was in recovery, how he was able to progress the ball out of the back when needed to. And I think Tomori is a similar mould to that type of player. Again, Tomori's if if someone like an Ivan Tony or a Dominic Calvert Lewin comes up and pins themselves on a Tomori, that's where you could face some issues, which is where where Moyes probably had his reservations coming in and being in a low block as well, because he'd have to deal with a lot of those physical duels and you know aerial duels. But you know his groundwork and his ground you know physicality isn't the issue. He'd be able to you know mark a lot of the strikers in the Premier League. I'd have no doubt with that about that. It's just. When it comes to the aerial side of the game, for a centre back, it's massive. But I think Gahey's proven as well that you can look past that as a centre back if you're good enough on the ball, if your reading of the game, if your timing of the game is good enough. And as well, he's six foot one. It's not like he's four foot. He's still like he's still tall enough to be able to, you know, win aerial duels. He's just not on a consistent basis. But you know, if we compare him to someone like Zuma. On that right-hand side, you can see there look, aerial duels uh, one percentage in that middle of the graph there. They're pretty much like for like. So again, Zuma wasn't massively impressive in his aerial duels one percentage last season, which is why they're kind of on par there. Um, but again, you can kind of see it's definitely his weaker side of the game. But as you look towards the other things like successful defensive actions per 90, defensive duels per 90, Tomori is actually in a really high percentage there. Um, and especially with his progressive passes and his forward passes, accurate passes, it just takes it to another level. And you're not really losing out much in terms of the amount of aerial duels he would be winning over, say, a Zuma. As we know, Zuma's definitely regressing. Um, and Tomori is only 26. So I think the big thing for me is the fee. Because, again, we've been looking at the likes of Tadebo. It looks like he's going to be going to Juventus. Uh, we've looked at other centre-backs as well. How much do you realistically think this is going to take to, co to, uh, take to get over the line, Sloth? Because it's one of the best European centre-backs from last season. Uh, he was very good for AC Milan. And again, he's a key figure for them in what is what. He's still got a contract till 2027 as well. I think it depends what Milan want to do. Is that they're one of those clubs where if they want to sign someone, then they're going to make it happen and they're going to sell to do that. So if Milan want to sign a, you know, well, you know, potentially they're looking at money from Rafael Leal or, or mm. if they want to keep a hold of him, they're going to have to offload someone to make that happen and offer a better contract. And I think the financial side of it, they paid, what, Chelsea 25 million for him. So I definitely don't think it would be a, a penny less than that. I think they'd want to be able to make a profit off it. I'd be surprised if it was less than 30 to 35 million pounds. Mm -hmm. Um that sort of fee, thirty million pounds, I'd be like, yeah, great, that's that's fantastic. Thirty-five yeah. million pounds, I think you just start to creep towards that upper echelon of centre backs. Same as Tadebo, isn't it? Really, similar price. I think. Look, my my, my issue with Tadebo is that the amount of injuries that he had, and also yeah. some of his decision making at times. You don't have that decision making error with uh, Gray. You have a bit more of an aerial duel worry, but. To be honest, I think that's something that the rest of his game irons out. I think he would be a fantastic signing. I would just be worried if, for that money, you could go out and get done so. If you mm. offered £35 million pounds, uh, to, uh, to Lons and said, that we're going to give you £35 million, and I know he's got a slightly higher release clause, but they're in financial trouble. If you said that, he comes in, fills a homegrown quota, has no issue in the air at all, um, yeah. offers a lot of the same ability, maybe not quite the blistering pace, but has the same sort of solidity in his overall game. And I think that that would be the main issue for me. I would personally, maybe I'm, I'm being a bit ambitious, but I would try and get both. Because I think that if you want to make a statement, you've got to be able to win games. Building out from the back is something that how many times did we drop a lead or how many times did we concede a goal and, and yeah. cock things up? I'm thinking about Newcastle away mainly. I'm still battle scars in my, in my mind about that. <laughs> but I think that if you can have a strong squad and potentially take advantage of some of the financial situations in Europe. Man don't really have to worry about that at the moment. 
whereas mm. other teams do. And I just worry that if we were going to spend £35 million on someone like Tadebo, yeah. um, Gray, Tamori. Tamori, all the names under the sun, <laughs> uh, if we were going to spend £35 million on Tamori, potentially we could use that elsewhere and mm. maybe look to even go on a loan to buy, similar yeah. like what we offered to, uh, to Debo. So I I think overall he's a very good player. There's a question mark that, to be honest, I think he would answer as soon as he came into the Premier League and returned back. Yeah. But it's just that that question of value for me. I think as well, as you mentioned, you know, it depends on outgoings at this point. You know, it was first rumoured or said that we need to sell one of a Gerd or Zuma or both to really fund a move for someone like Tadebo, which is why we were trying to do the loan with an option to buy. Um, so it may be something similar with Tamori, but I doubt they would go for that type of loan with option to buy move. We don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, I think if you're going to sell a Gerd as well, you, we, we know Tamori can play left centre-back and right centre-back. So again, that's another positive. Um, and again, if you're selling someone like Zuma, you've got Mavropanos and Tomori on that right hand side. So, yeah, for me, it would be a. I think it would be a, a definitely an upgrade. It's definitely an upgrade on what we've got. To I think Kilman and Tomori as a centre back pairing would be really strong. And I think people undervalue the 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 need for centre backs who don't just kick the ball out of play and the pressure just immediately comes back onto you. I think that's something that gets overlooked quite a lot. Um, and Tomori would, you know, bring a, 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 ne a new level of reassurance uh, compared to someone like Kurt Zuma, if we want to put it nicely. But 35 to 40 million. Um, if we do get the transfer over the line, Sloth, what are you going to rate that transfer out of 10? Um, I think the only reason I'd give it a seven is just because of the overall worry from West Ham, the ghost of West Ham's past. I yeah. think that if you, if you spend that kind of money, I would be a bit worried that we're not going to spend that kind of money again yeah. or like across the pitch where I think we desperately need it. But I think as a player to come in, no doubts about it. Mm -hmm. I think he's, he, he would, as you say, massively improve the defence. And I just hope we could get rid of Gwerd and Zuma and, and maybe look to bring in someone else again to help boost that, um, boost that part of the pitch. Yeah, I think if we sell Zuma for a decent fee to someone like a Saudi or wherever he ends up going, if he, if we do sell him and we use those funds towards, say, a Tamori, then you're really looking at a 15, 20 million pound deal. In that sense, I think it's a, it's definitely an upgrade. I know the wages, we'd have to pay a little bit more maybe. But yeah, I think I would probably give it a 7, 7.5 as a signing if we were to pull it off because I just think it improves our defence. And I, I prefer building from the back, but I know we need, yeah, we still need that left wing. We still need that striker. We still need a right back, maybe another eight as well to play in midfield. So there's a lot of work to do. And, you know, as the days tick by, they creep by, there's a lot more that's, you know, people are going to start to panic. We've obviously gone out to the US now, so there's going to be more importance to try and get deals done this week. So, yeah, it's one to keep an eye on. Obviously, it's a player we've been linked with before. So there's definitely interest again uh, under Lopetegui as well. So, yeah, let us know in the comments down below. What do you think of the links to Tamori? Would you like to see him in a West Ham shirt as we go into the new season? Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed the breakdown, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And Sloth, until the next one. Come on, you irons. <laughs>